Okay, everybody, good morning. How are we today? My name is Jenna Sistad, and I am the project manager for the Ocean Mammoth Health Alliance, which for those of you who don't know is our region's Cancer and Chronic Disease Prevention Coalition. I thank you for being with us this morning and we have some great updates from our end. We have a wonderful presentation from Dan Pearson over at Rutgers CINJ. Um, we're gonna hear from Raven Gates today and um, then we will hear from all of you hopefully. So I just wanna start by thanking you again for being here and uh, thanking you all for hanging in there with us while I was away. Um, I just had our second son and was out for a while there. So um, Marlene Alvarado, Diana Rios and Natasha Davis had really graciously stepped in and, and done the job while I was away. So thank you to those three and everyone else who contributed while I was out. Um, Hello, Jenna, it's Diana. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. I, yeah, I didn't, I, I'm, hi everyone. I, um, I'm calling in, but I'm trying to see if I can log on. I have no camera, <laughs> so. Okay, all right, we're glad you're here. Um, so what you see happening right now, everyone, is that in the chat box, people are writing their names and their contact information, and that's helpful for us to know who's here and who's with us today, and also for networking purposes. You know, a lot of people are always connecting with one another, and it's good to, to learn who's with us. So if you wouldn't mind, if you haven't already, please put your name and your contact information into the chat box. All right, so um, the first thing I want to do is take us through some updates from the coalition's perspective, and we can start with the staff changes. Um, as I mentioned, Marlene Alvarado, who was our bilingual community health worker, had uh, really stepped in while I was out on leave and handled all things coalition. But um, before my return, Marlene has moved on to a different position. She's now working with um, the County Councils for Young Children, which is also another VNA House grant, which we are grateful for. So we haven't like totally lost her. But as far as the coalition goes, Marlene is more working more of a of a partner of the coalition now instead of our CHW. So um, that means that we do have a position that is available. The position that we've created has changed a little bit from when Marlene held the position. Um, it's going to be part time 15 hours with us, the coalition, and then 22.5 with the SEED program, Cancer Education and Early Detection, to make a full-time 37.5 position for us within the VNA. So myself and Raven Gates will be overseeing that position together, and it's great because the coalition and SEED do a lot together and have um, like-minded work happening in the community for Monmouth and Ocean County. So if you know of anybody who would be interested in that position, please let myself or Raven know. Um, we're looking to fill that position as soon as possible. And we really need it to be somebody who has transportation and is bilingual Spanish speaker also. All right, so it's a 37.5 um, hour position and we could talk more offline if anybody has interest. The other staff change that we have is that our Natasha Davis um, is no longer with us. She was our director uh, of the department uh, with the Children and Family Health Institute over here at VNA. And uh, Raven's going to talk to us a little bit more about that position uh, later on down the agenda. But just wanting to tell everybody that Natasha has moved on and taken a different position um, within the Hackensack Meridian Health Network, um, doing the New Jersey Inc., program and um, you know she's just done so much for our coalition and we thank her for everything all the support she's given us through the years and um, we really miss her but again we're still going to see her just not in the same capacity that takes us through our staff changes so um recent events just a couple of really successful events that happened this past quarter we had our vaccines and veggies and freehold and our wellness rocks and lakewood both of these um, events were happening out in the community. Many of you or your organizations were there alongside of us. We were offering COVID and flu vaccines, um, 
We had lead tests happening. We had A1Cs and blood pressure screenings. There was uh, food drives happening the day of. It was a really great way for us to network with the community, let them know that we're there and get people access to the health services that they need. So um, two really successful events and we'll hope to do more like that in the new year. And then of course we have our upcoming events. I can't believe we're already talking about 2024, but this will be our last quarterly event for this year. And uh, moving into 2024, you see the dates listed there for our quarterly meeting schedule. Um, we have one, we have one uh, every quarter and you see the dates listed there. They will continue to be from 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, our Health to Hold webinar series, uh, we've been doing this since the inception of the pandemic. We were doing it twice a week way back then, but now we've continued to do it in a different way. We're doing it once a month fourth Wednesday of the month, 10 to 11 a.m. And what we do is we engage partners like yourselves to present on the services and the programs that you offer respectively, but also to help us highlight and raise awareness about the Health Awareness Month. So um, for example, the one that's happening this month in November, since it's lung, lung Cancer Awareness Month is happening with Horizon, and they're going to be talking to us about all that Horizon has to offer, how we can access those services, and they'll be doing a little bit of an education piece on lung cancer screenings as well. So um, we're, we're pretty much booked up for the 2024 series, except I think we have two slots open. I think we have Men's Health Month open, and that's June, and I believe we have uh, July as well available for UV Safety Month. So if anybody here is interested in being a presenter for one of those months, please write it into the chat or connect with me afterwards. It would be great to, um, to discuss ways to, we could work together. Um, HPV initiatives. I put that there because the state really has um, high hopes for us to be talking a lot about HPV this year. Raven and I are going to meet next week to figure out how we can you know, do more in the community together. And January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, where we do talk a lot about HPV and how we can prevent um, cervical cancer in some aspects, raising awareness about HPV. So if anybody um, has connections to schools, really, I think we're looking to get into schools or faith-based organizations to help push the message of what HPV is, how we can prevent it. And um, we have a really great video that comes along with an educational talk that we promote out in the community. Um, it follows the lives of five different women and it's a great way to educate all ages. So that's our HPV endeavors that we're hoping to engage in in the upcoming year. Then um, a new initiative for us this year that the state has outlined we're going to be doing is a women's health event. So um, we can be very creative in how that looks, but we have to highlight uh, cervical, breast, and colorectal cancer for women. And we hope to be doing that sometime around maybe Mother's Day in May. So if anybody has interest in being a part of that women's health planning, that would be great. Let me know. We'd love to have you included. Uh, be part of the planning committee with us and implement a women's health event. What's next here? Oh, the survivorship panel. Um, Meg from the Elixir Fund and I are talking about all things survivorship and we're figuring out what we can do together. Um, we're talking a little bit about bringing together a panel of speakers to figure out what are the needs of survivors when they're in treatment and even beyond treatment. Um, so what are the needs of survivors from a survivor's perspective? What are the needs of survivors from a primary care perspective and also from an oncology perspective? perspective. So um, those three perspectives are all unique and important. And how can we have an informed discussion on, 
you know, the priorities that each have and how those would look if we were working more cohesively together as one rather than in three different silos. So more information to come and um, let us know if you have any resources or you'd like to be involved in that with us. And I think I already talked about the quarterly meeting schedule. So I won't go back over there, but you see again, the dates there. I just gave a whole lot of information. So I'm gonna pause and ask, does anybody have any questions about anything that I mentioned so far? If I could, Jenna. Hey Pete, I can't oh. see you, but I can hear you. Oh, I have my camera on, I apologize. No, no, it's not you, it's just me. I have my thing minimized. Oh, wonderful. I'm, well, it's great to see you back and it's a wonderful coalition and honor to be a part of. Uh, I heard you talk about Men's Health Month and uh, Women's Health Month somewhere around the Mother's Day holiday. I can send an email. Michael I apologize for that. Michael's my colleague in disaster preparedness here at the County Health Department, but it's the way it always works. <laughs> uh, I will... Uh, copy my colleagues. Uh, they do finger stick diabetes, uh, glucose, A1C, um, oxygen saturation, uh, and uh, also the women's health event. Um, I could I could reach out to some colleagues too on email and do an introduction. You may know our, our colleagues here well anyway already. If you want me to do that, I will, Jenna. I would love that. Yes. The the more the merrier to any of the events that we host. And uh, yeah, love to have discussion in ways we can work together. I thank you. That's all. Thank you. Anybody else? Questions or thoughts to add? Let me check the chat really quick because I don't know. I hey, Jenna, it's on. Leah from MSK. How are you? Hey, hey Leah. I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Sorry, I popped on a little late. Um, okay. Are you looking for the for the women's health event and HPV? Are you looking for speakers? Um, I think the short answer is yes. We haven't really outlined the agenda and what that event will look like, but yes, I know we're going to try and have it in person in the community, and um, we will likely need some speakers. Yeah. And what date is that? We haven't identified a date. We're trying to bring okay. partners that are interested together so that we can create a planning committee and start discussing everything together. Is there a month in mind for that one? I'm thinking May around early, maybe early May around Mother's Day, since we're like celebrating okay. women. So always interested in opportunities um, around women's health. MSK recently started offering vaccines to the community, HPV vaccines to the community. So we rolled out initially for our employees only, and we just finalized a flyer, which I can share with you. I'm actually gonna tailor it to New Jersey as well um, for another partner who's gonna be sharing it. Um, you know, it, it's whether or not we're gonna get bites, I'm, I'm on the fence. Like I'm thrilled that we're gonna offer this to the community. I don't know how many community members are gonna come to MSK to get their vaccine. Mm -hmm but it's an offering that we have. It's for adults only, I should mention also, not for peds patients. So um, so yeah, I just wanted to, to throw that out there and um, always interested in collaborating around HPV, especially now that we have this vaccine available, so. A hundred percent, yes. So I have a question back for you. If we were to do something in the Ocean County area, would that still apply or do you have to stick yeah. with Yeah. Okay, okay. Sure, yeah, that's our catchment. Okay, great. Awesome. I love it. Me too. Um, Iris, I see that you have your hand up. Go right ahead. Hi. Um, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to note um, that we can both present on women's health, HPV, um, but even because it's it's specific around um, women's health, we can do reproductive health as well and menstrual poverty and um, access to menstrual products as well. So please count us in to, to kind of brainstorm how we can support this specific um, event around women's health and like fold in other components in addition. We could do HPV, but if we have other partners that can, you know, speak to that, we can kind of share the wealth um, and, and add in some reproductive health as well um, around period poverty. 
I love that. And mm -hmm. I love being able to offer them some products that they may not know about yep. or know how to use. So exactly. some education have, on that would be, yep. would be wonderful. Yes. Yeah, and we have partners too that that um provide like specific language and um, educational materials and products um, like the flow initiative and, and others. So it, it can be a really robust um, collaboration beyond, you know, women's health and um, HPV, which are both important, but um, to kind of fold in other um, health topics as well. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I love this. <laughs> Great, yep. thank Just you. Loop, loop me in, and then I'll loop in our nurse health educator, Camilla Votary, who um, is like specialized in this area on um, period poverty and uh, reproductive health. Okay, great. You're welcome. I'll keep you looped in, Iris. Thank you. All right, I'm catching up on the chat here, and I see um, Sheila. Thank you so much from um, the Monmouth County School Nurses Association. I appreciate you always trying to get them informed in what we're doing. Um, it's sad to hear that there's no Ocean County Association any longer, but we can still work with the Monmouth County. So um, yeah, I'll be I'll be in touch. I wrote down your name to to get in touch afterwards. And Michelle, I do see asking about the invites for the quarterly meetings. And yes. I have a one pager with all the information. So I'll shoot that out to everybody with the minutes for this meeting. Yeah, I saw that I saw that they were listed in the thing, but um, to get them onto my calendar is always more difficult. I was only selling calendar, sending out the calendar invites so that I know that they're there. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or thoughts before we move on to the next agenda item? Okay. All right, Dan, I see that you're with us, but um, Raven Gates has another meeting to get to. So I'm going to switch up the agenda items here, if we wouldn't mind, and ask if Raven Gates can go next um, to give her update, and then we'll move on to Dan. So Raven, are you with us? Do you want to go next? Yes. Sorry about that, Dan, <laughs> but thank you. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, so I have some seed updates. Um, I know Natasha would do this, we do have our, um, well, I don't want to go ahead of myself anyway, but our wise women updates, number one. Um, we did have the, the previous grant year, but it ended on September 30th, 2023. So we did apply again for wise women funding um, for our, the new grant year, which is supposed to start in November. Um, so we are still awaiting if we're being awarded or, you know, if we got the money or not. Hopefully we receive it again um, because wise women was very helpful. Um, to our seed patients. Um, if you aren't familiar with the Wise Women program, it was helping those with hypertension, but it was for specifically seed patients only. So you had to be a seed patient in order to receive those services. Um, so hopefully we are awarded again um, so that we can you know, still do what we were doing before and increasing that as well. Um, another update for seed is that um, I sent an email out, but I'm not sure if anybody on here got it. I think Michelle did. Um, but I was recently promoted as the seed program and marketing manager um, for the seed program for Mammoth. Thanks, Jenna, <laughs> for Mammoth in Ocean County. Um, so we do have, thank you, Leah, I can see some faces. <laughs> um, we do have our new director, um, Tiffany Burton, who is going to be starting on December 4th. So you will see emails from myself um, as well as from Tiffany Burton. Um, she is new to the VNA and will be new to seed. So I just ask that we all can just bear with her as she's learning. <laughs> she's going to be throwing a lot of information as far as the seed and learning about our coalition. Um, I'm going to help her as much as I can as well. Um, but I will mostly be conducting a lot of the program, the marketing, basically all of the seed program. And she will be our director, but also helping in other capacities as well for the coalition. Um, and if we do receive wise woman, that as well. So she will be having a lot to um go through but you know she's a great person um I met her through the interview and I think she will be great um one other thing is that we did hire um a bilingual navigator for our ocean and Monmouth for Monmouth County um but she does help with Ocean County as well and we have another bilingual navigator um slated to start on November 20th um so we're excited about that um, but as Jenna mentioned earlier we do have that community health worker position that is still available um and open um, we did have some possible candidates, but you know, if someone else is interested and they get ahead of that, 
where we will um, take the time to meet with that person as well. So if you have any recommendations, please, please, please send them over. Um, we need to get that position filled because <laughs> it's been a little empty. And you know how grants work. Um, if a position is open too long, it's not good. And we don't ever want to give money back to the state. So we want to be able to uh, get someone in that position and get them going um, and doing more outreach. Um, for our health equity grant, um, sad to say, Diana, who was the project coordinator for that grant, um, will be moving to a new grant. It's just a lot of transitions this season, you know, but it's great. Beautiful challenges, beautiful transitions. She will be transitioning to a new grant. So we will be looking for um, a project coordinator for the HER grant. Um, with that grant, it does end May of 2024. So it's a little bit of a challenge, but I think we'll be able to possibly um, find someone to take on that for a specific time and then possibly roll them over into any of our other grants. That is what we're hoping for. But um, if you know someone that may be interested in doing that as well, please send that information over. <laughs> I feel like I'm like LinkedIn or trying to like, indeed, trying to get all these people hired. But <laughs> if you know people that are interested, please send that information over. Um, last thing I have to say is we did, I'm not sure if it was mentioned before, um, we have um, a connection, a partnership with the Mealy Foundation. And the Mealy Foundation um, is a foundation that has partnered with the VNA and it provides those who do not qualify, who do not qualify for seed to receive breast um, screenings and they will have to get funded from that fund because they wouldn't qualify for seed. So we'll be able to pay for those breast services for them out of that Mealy Fund if they're over income for our seed program. We also received um, a $50,000 donation from the Calder Foundation um, to uh, increase our promotional um, promotional items for printing and education on breast and cervical. Um, we were able to get it translated in Spanish, Creole, and um, English, which was great. Um, and we got a lot of those things ordered. We also have a couple of PSA videos that are gonna be done, interviews to share that as well as also to develop a toolkit, um, an awareness campaign that can be shared. So we have a couple of billboards that are gonna be going up. So if you see our seed slash mealy billboards, just let us know if they're in your area because we have them kind of all over Monmouth and Ocean County. So that is soon to come. And there's all the updates that I have, but I put my information in the chat. Um, if anyone wants to meet with me, I know I have a meeting coming up with Michelle Dedea, but if there's anyone that wants to set up a Zoom, so that we can connect and you can, I know you know about C, but want to know what things we can do to work and partner with in the future, please, please, please feel free to email me or reach out to Jenna and uh, let me know. So thank you guys for letting me have that few moments. <laughs> thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Raven. We always appreciate you being here and giving the updates. Um, does anybody have questions for Raven or anything to share about what she updated us on? No. Okay. All right. In the meantime, I put a couple things in the chat. Um, at the end of the meeting, I'm going to ask you guys all if you wouldn't mind filling out our experience survey. We're always looking to improve. So we'd love to hear from you all. You can stay anonymous. It'll take three minutes. That would be great if you could fill that out. And also just a link to our Facebook page. If you don't follow us or like us or anything like that, please take um, a minute to check it out. And this is a platform where I can put your stuff too. It's not just the things that we're hosting. It's an educational resource. So we can share um, all things cancer and chronic disease prevention. So feel free to send me over some stuff if you want me to post it. Um, Shari, we'll make sure we re-put Raven's information um, back into the chat for us. As I see, you maybe joined um, after she had put it in then that would probably be why we can't all see it. All right, and Sheila, what's Sheila saying? Oh, yes, 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 Mary Remhoff. Okay, great. We can connect with Mary to see if she can get us connected with the county superintendent meetings. Great, thank you. Make that note. Okay, all right, so let's move on to the next agenda item. We have Dan Pearson from Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey. If you've been with us, you know that he's been um, presenting and he's been bringing us lots of different types of data. And um, today he's going to talk to us about a new platform that they are working with called Cancer in Focus. And I'm really excited to hear about what this entails. So Dan, thank you for being with us and um, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Thank you, Jenna. Yeah, so our uh, Cancer in Focus 
platform. Basically, this came about um, through a conference we attended last year. So every year there is a, a community outreach and engagement conference where all of these departments from the NCI cancer centers come together and um, meet and discuss, you know, challenges, successes that um, the programs are having at their sites. And it's really cool because you get to see what what other centers are doing, especially because we all have really unique like service areas. You know, New Jersey is obviously one of the more densely populated and busier service areas. Some folks are working like in really rural areas. So one of the things we were interested in um, looking at was, you know, a, a platform where we could get all of the publicly available data into one place so that people can access it and utilize it um, and explore it and really understand their own service areas. So um, this was a project that, you know, we combined a few different cancer centers, but the University of Kentucky took the lead on it and uh, got some grant funding and were able to, you know, dedicate a lot of time and funding to building this platform out. So it's called Cancer in Focus. It basically takes sources from you know the cdc the state cancer profiles environmental agencies uh the american college of radiology um pretty much anything you could think of to look at um like on a county or census tract level is going to be available on this platform for you um so there's different ways to visualize it different ways to download uh data and compare data as well so these are all of the topics that are included on the platform. So they're broken down into these categories here. So we have socio-demographics, economics, insurance, environment. Uh, we have three different cancer screenings that are on there, breast, cervical, and colorectal. Uh, different risk factors from like the behavioral risk factor survey, some health disparities from the American Community Survey, and some other health factors, and different locations that you could actually plot onto maps um, over you know, different rates that you've selected otherwise from the other categories. So I have the links out. Um, we deployed them publicly for like a test environment. So our goal is to have all three of these applications. They're all, they're all kind of one, but they're developed separately in their own, their, their own kind of monster. So we have to wrap them into one thing so that they're on one central site. But these are the links if you want to test them out and check them out um, in their current state. Um, we'll send that out afterwards for everybody. But I wanted to run through each version just to give you a sense of like exactly what you can do on here and why we think it's really useful and helpful for uh, people in New Jersey and for different community organizations. So this is the standard cancer and focus application. It pretty much does what you'd expect on like if you've ever been on like the cancer registry website where you can like use filters and, you know, look at cancer rates by county. Um, this does the same exact thing, but it has all of those variables that I listed earlier. So you can, you know, select your category and then select your specific variable within that category and it will update uh, the map accordingly. Uh, similarly, we have the census tract data available. So this is what I think is a really unique feature to the Cancer in Focus. Like these things are pretty commonly available on a county level. Like you can go on the the CDC website or the behavioral risk factor survey, like NJ Shad website or the cancer registry site and do things by county. But this utilized the CDC's um, places data to really give us a sense of what's going on at a, the sub county level, which we've heard a lot of, you know, requests for over the past few years. So if we select census tract, it will update our map accordingly. If you hover over any of the cells, it gives you, you know, what census tract, what county you're in and the percentage or the rate uh, or value of whatever you've selected on the left-hand side. So right now we just have living below poverty. You could switch it to household income. It'll update, you know, you can plot different things on here. So we actually have outlines for food deserts in New Jersey. And if you wanted to plot points on the map, you can as well. So if you were looking for like, obviously you're all pretty locked into what's going on in Monmouth and Ocean Counties, but like we figured for like our navigation team's purposes, this is a cool thing to have if you wanted to find all of the GI providers in an area, you know, you can look here and then the map zooms in all the way. My machine's kind of an overload running all through these apps. So it's zooming pretty slowly, but you know, you can hover over those points too and it gives you the full information about each site. And that's, that's the same thing for all these FQHCs, GI providers, lung cancer screening, mammography sites, and then some of the environmental um, sites as well. 
So it gives you all the information, you know, the phone number, the address, what the provider is. Um, so a pretty neat feature. And then you can download the map. You can download the data that you filtered uh, behind the map as well. Now I'm just trying to get to the next app. So the next application for this is called uh, the Cancer and Focus Profiles. And basically what this one allows you to do is download a customized profile for the area that you've selected. So this one currently is only available for counties, um, but they're looking at adding census tracts to it. So basically how this one works is you would just select a county on the map. We'll pick Mammoth for our purposes and then select a variable. So if you wanted to look at cancer incidents, then you have different options to view the data. So you can look in a data table format where it will give you the value for Monmouth County. And then right next to it, it gives you the New Jersey value for all of those cancers. So you can see how um, they stack up uh, against the state, the state's median uh, total for those rates. And that's the same thing for every category. And then if you wanted to look at it like this and like a descending bar graph value, you could see the cancer incidence rates for all cancer sites from 2016 to 2020 starting with the highest and then going to the lowest. So see that Monmouth County was actually fourth highest on the five-year cancer incidence list for the, the previous five reportable years. And you can download anything on here again. So you can download the plot, you can download the data behind it. And then the cool thing about this one is when you hit create data profile, it actually gives you all of the variables that are included, not just the ones you've selected. So I have... Uh, downloaded a few of them here just to show you what they look like. So this is what a report would look like if you ran it for Monmouth County. It's similar to the table, but it just includes every single variable that you can think of on there. So, you know, that has, it has them sectioned out pretty nicely as well. So that has the sociodemographic section, economics, environment, housing and transportation, screening and risk factors. Again, comparing your county rate to the New Jersey rate. So it's a pretty comprehensive report with all the, the data that's pulled and then created into one thing behind the scenes and then just easily spit out. And then lastly, we have the cancer and focus by variate, which is a little more in depth. It's kind of a way to compare two values to one another. So um, you can do this on a map or you can do this on uh, like a scatter plot. So Basically, what you would do here is you select two different values. So here we have, let's do cancer incidence for all cancers and cancer mortality for all cancers. Pretty simple, right? So basically what this does is it gives you the color combinations here. So the darkest colors would be like higher for both cancer incidence and cancer mortality. If it's more red, that would be higher mortality, but uh, not as high incidence and things like that. Um, the same thing is true for the scatter plot. You know, the x-axis here is the cancer incidence and the y uh, is the cancer mortality. And you can, you know, hover over the dots and see what counties where they fall on those uh, bivariate plots. And it gives you more information. So, like, obviously not everyone is going to be super familiar with how these work. So we have some uh, descriptors for these sections. So what the map would look like. And then about the scatter plots too, a little background on like what the correlation would be uh, between two variables that you're looking at on the plots. And then any information about the data sources is also available. So if you wanted to see where anything was coming from and you needed to cite something that you've used here, you know where to get it. So you can find this right on the application. If you click on the map, it says data sources and it gives you all the the websites and the, the sources that anything was pulled from. So it's a really cool use of a, of like all the publicly available information. And I thought it was a really neat way to collaborate with other cancer centers across the country and, and provide a platform for communities to use um, to really understand their, their catchment area and any disparities that might exist specifically, um, even for like guided outreach events. You know, if you wanted to look at specific census tracts where you think might be a good opportunity to do something that might have low like colorectal cancer screening and you wanted to hand out fit tests there, you know, that's like a really cool opportunity that this uh, kind of provides for you uh, the ability to map 
that American Community Survey and the, the places data onto, um, you know, a map of New Jersey or your specific counties. But that's really it. I just wanted to share the tool. Again, the links are going to be available here in the slide deck, or you could, you know, screenshot them and type them in. They're in test environment right now, so we're going to launch them as a whole unit, uh, hopefully within the coming weeks. And then, you know, we'll share any new links that go out uh, for it in that time. But I appreciate the time. And if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know now and I can answer them or you can email me separately and I can answer them for you. Thank you, Dan. Um, we did have somebody who had to hop off ask if the slides would be available for sharing. So i um, excited to hear that we can have access to these links, even though it's in, you know, in more of like an infancy for state right now. Yeah. I I mean, a so, Jenna, the apps themselves are like pretty much done. We just like launched them for New Jersey for the first time. So they should be good. Like, I think if we just like once we get them all wrapped into one thing, I think they're ready to go full, full speed. So we okay. will keep them updated on it, though. Awesome. No, that's great. This is cool. It's very, it's actually very cool, um, like you said, to connect with other areas and kind of see what's happening there as compared to here. Um, my question for you is when we were emailing back and forth about this was you had mentioned that it does other things other than just like talk about cancer. Can you maybe do not like a full tutorial, but maybe just take us through like one other, let's say, you know, um, chronic disease or some other touch point that we could see just for a reference, because I could see us using this when we're applying for grants or we're trying to, like you said, just find information about an area that we're looking to do an outreach event or something like that. Yeah, let's see what they have for chronic disease on here. So essentially like these data come from a place where I'd imagine we can add anything on here if we wanted to. So this was kind of like the packaged version that we created that we thought was like the most relevant specifically for cancer because we are all from cancer centers. Yeah. So anything else that might like, maybe we could even add like a chronic disease section on here right now. It doesn't exist. We have the health factors, other ha health factors, yeah. Disease. but there are other ones that are on the behavioral risk factor survey that we have. So like, this is the full list right now. Okay. No, it's good because like, you know, oftentimes we see the dual diagnosis, um, you know, cancer and whatever yeah, else right. it might be. So this is, this is helpful. And so I, this is just the the main home, or is this under the profile? This is the main application. Okay. For, the, main. for the profile, if you print that out, it will give you all of this stuff already. Mm -hmm. But it's obviously only on a county level right now. So yeah, you'll have the other health factors plus the New Jersey median here. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. No, yeah, this is really good. Yeah, so Very I guess cool. one of the, I guess like one of the next steps that we want to include is be able to run the profiles by census tract or by place um, rather than county because we like offering the other stuff by census tract is super exciting, but I think like everything needs to kind of like if we can put a census tract versus the state area, you'd be able to really like especially if you're like doing like a grant submission and you are like hyper focused on an area, that yeah. would be super helpful. Um, but like I just want to shout out CDC places because. The data sets that they provided are just awesome. Like you can do not just census tract, but also specific cities that exist on there. If the data allows it, they'll like you can get up to, I think it's like over like 300 municipalities in New Jersey are on there included. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's pretty neat. This is all very cool. All right. Well, thank you for taking us through that. Does anybody have a question for Dan? All right. Well, thank you again for going through that with us. Thanks, Jenna. Yeah, of course. All right. While Dan was presenting, I did a few things. I put the quarterly meetings in the chat. So there you'll see the dates, the times, all the information um, to log yourself in. So you could quickly and easily copy and paste that into your calendar invites or just have them there for your reference. Again, I'll be sending out the reminders. Um, after this meeting and as we get closer to each of those meetings. I see we have some newer folks who've joined us. So if you wouldn't mind putting your name and contact information into the chat, that would be helpful as we move along. People can see who is with us today. And finally, it's time to do the updates from all of you. It's just about 45 minutes to do that. So I think that's a great amount of time. 
And I would like to ask if our hospital system and or uh, cancer centers can go first with updates. So feel free to take yourself off mute and tell us what's going on. Hi, it's Lee again. Hey. I, I always um, I always can count on you, Leah. Thank you. Go ahead. I'll, I'll fill some airspace. You know, I, I'm I'll, I'm always up to the challenge. I love that. Um, as mentioned, we're launching HPV vaccine to the community. Um, and as I said earlier, for those of you um, who may or may not have been on a call at that point, I'm not sure how many community members we would get to just to come to MSK for a vaccine, but it's now available. So Jenna, I'll share that flyer with you. Um, right now I'm coming off of breast cancer awareness month, like everyone else. So kind of taking a breath after that. Um, and I'm focusing on, um, donations around the holidays. So, um, I have some budget, um, this year to donate to local food pantries, local Christmas, Hanukkah, other holiday celebrations. So if anyone here knows of any opportunities in Ocean Monmouth County that are looking for support, please let me know. I'll put my info in the chat. Um, and yeah, Do just people have to have any for. specific type of diagnosis or hardship. Like what's the criteria for the it's just donations? around it's like feel good holiday donations. So for all of uh, so my team, I'm one in New Jersey, but I have a couple colleagues who do what I do in our other regional locations on Long Island, Westchester and New York City. So partnering with like schools that have like holiday wish lists, like who are in need. I'm partnering with the township of Middletown to provide um, grocery bags for the food that they're going to donate to families in need. Um, in Basking Ridge, for example, I'm um, sponsoring a Hanukkah event where there's a guilt drop from a fire, the chocolate coin drop from the fire um, trucks, I'm partnering with the township around that. I'm partnering uh, for Christmas tree lighting events. So it's, it's, Right now, because it's the holiday time, I'm focusing on those type of donations. I'm always looking to support our hyper-local communities. So that would be Mammoth, um, Basking Ridge, and Bergen um, with organizations that are in need. So just kind of wanted to throw that out to this group um, who may have ideas uh, around supporting. So that's what I'm Excellent. focused on in the next month. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you, Leah. And I'm sure you Thank put your phone, your stuff in the chat, right? I'll do it now. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Cool. All right. Other cancer centers or hospital systems that want to give an update? I see Terry. I see Marissa. I see Edgar. Um, I can go next. Go ahead. Hi, um, Edgar. Hi. Um, no, nothing major um, updates, but this. Friday, um, November uh, November tenth, uh, Central State will be serving dinner at the Freehold Community um, at St. Peter's Church, um, in the Freehold area. So, if you want to like just let um, you know your clients or patients know, um, that we'll be giving the free dinner for them. That would be great. Um, anything else? Um, well, I don't know if I mentioned in this group before, but. You know, recently, Central State has partnered with uh, the Unitas platform. It's like an electronic referral system where, um, you know, when when we as as the health equity coordinators go up to the floors and speak to some of our um, inpatients, uh, you know, like any social needs that they may have or stuff like that. And, you know, if we're able to send like referrals electronically through the Unitas to like different partners in the Monmouth or even Ocean um, County, um, that would be great. So if there's any partners here who would be interested to learn more about that and would like to um, also partner with that, that would be also great. And I think I left my um, contact info in the chat, um, I think all the way up, but I could put it again just in case anybody would like to learn more about it and we could discuss further outside of the Zoom. But that's it. Thanks, Edgar. Yes, I know we're just starting to get into learning more about that platform. It's very cool. So far, I was in there the other day. Um, okay, any other hospital systems or cancer centers that want to give an update? No. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Our health department. Um, Pete's here and Helica's here. Jane is here. 
feel free to take yourselves off mute and give us an update if you have one. Hi, this is Jane Walling. I'm from the Ocean County Office of Senior Services. And our, our department primarily gives information on programs and services. We don't provide a specific program. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here, to listen to all the wonderful programming and, and uh, opportunities that are available so that we can help educate our seniors when they call us. But um, one thing that is happening right now that I do want to point out, it is, is open enrollment for Medicare, which runs until December 7th. So any seniors that are looking at their Medicare insurance coverage, particularly for their Medicare D drug coverage, now is their opportunity to make changes. And we have a very busy uh, staff here because right now we have a lot of seniors coming in and doing exactly that. They can speak with we call them SHIP counselors, S-H-I-P, that stands for State Health Insurance Program. That means that they are counselors in Medicare. Um, so a client will come in and they'll help them work, look at their, their Medicare D drug coverage and what the rates are going to be for 2024 and what their costs are going to be for 2024. And they can compare, shop for better prices. So any seniors that are in need, send them to the Ocean County Office of Senior Services. Um, but we help seniors with anything that they uh, that that's that they're having an issue with. We will try to direct them to the program where they can get that help. And that's it. Excellent. Thank you, Jane. I saw that um, Angelica wrote some things in the chat and although she's not able to come off mute, she says that the health department in Freehold, it continues to offer vaccines, flu and COVID and lead tests. Um, and then for training, the QPR, suicide prevention training in person and virtual as well as CPR. And let's see who else wrote something. Oh, and Kelsey trains on chronic disease self-management for the seniors as well. Excellent, thank you, Angelica. If anybody has flyers or any of the things that they're sharing right now too, um, if you wouldn't mind throwing them into my inbox, that would be helpful. I'll send those things out with the minutes from today's meeting so everyone has access to them. Okay, let's see. Um, our health insurance companies, anybody would like to give an update? Oh, Peter, I'm sorry. There you are, I saw you put your hand up, go ahead. I could offer, I didn't want to be rude, I could offer an update for Ocean County Health Department. Uh, so we are uh, the largest health department in the state other than the state health department itself. And so we're tasked with, uh, you know, just expanding the footprint of public health. There's about 225 of us, several different buildings dimpled all around the county, uh, out west, north, uh, as south as uh, Barnegat. And um, we have no shortage of, uh, of capital workforce here. Uh, we register nurses that go out and do programs like Live Healthy Ocean County, where we do finger stick glucose and cholesterol, pulse ox, um, even osteo screenings. Uh, we dovetail them and we, we work with our other county agencies, uh, such as the good people over at the Board of Social Services and the Board of Senior Services and Maria LaFace and, and her staff and Ms. Walling. So um, we, and I will share with you, Jenna, and if you could share with the coalition, we're trying to have a, a more of a focus with 225,000 seniors and most of them veterans uh, in our county. Uh, you know, and they're in their, their super seniors, folks over 80. Uh, we, we're trying to have a, uh, and we will have more of them, a uh, Veterans Health Fair and Expo over here. And again, working with county partners such as Ocean Ride to bring folks over here. And our nurses will go out to different residences and senior communities as well. Uh, so we're also trying to make touches in businesses. A lot of times we, we try to make touches on, uh, you know, very traditional partners. Um, my staff and myself, my colleagues, uh, we've this year been out and spoken with Walmart and ShopRite, meeting people where they are, uh, a row of automobile dealerships on uh, Exit 62 in Manahawk and the Causeway family of dealerships. These are folks that may not uh, otherwise have uh, sound medical benefits or they may be 
uninsured or underinsured. Uh, and we're bringing public health to them and giving them basic baseline readings uh, at these different partners. The partners have really responded because healthy employees are employees that call out sick less. So we're just trying to build out any any relationships that we can to spread the message of public health. We have health educators. If anybody wants to contact me, it's in the chat. Uh, and graciously, I, I ask on this call, we, um, we're not able to serve as well. So thank you for the extended time and I appreciate everybody being here. Thank you, Pete. And I just wanted to jump in since you asked about um, insurance yeah. companies. Yeah, um, go ahead. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, so I just wanted to remind folks to please um, help with the efforts on the renewal and recertification process for those who are Medicaid eligible. Um, that has started back in May. Um, folks uh, that came into Medicaid during the pandemic and were not familiar with that process of the annual renewal process may need to be reminded. Um, so those mailers, phone calls, emails, please have them respond to that and to those um, communications. And if they have questions, they could either, you know, communicate with their HMO, connect with NJ Family Care to ensure that they um, don't lose their coverage because of not uh, renewing. Um, again, it's super important. And then the second piece is the cover all kids for children um, who are 19 years of age and younger, regardless of legal status, um, may be eligible for Medicaid coverage. So if families um, that have young children who are uninsured, I would encourage you to connect them and, um, to NJ Family Care, connect them to us. We are more than happy to assist with those applications to ensure these children who are eligible for Medicaid coverage uh, get insured, um, covered, and then get access to the care that they need. Um, again, my name is Iris Novas Cooney. I'm happy to um, expand on these discussions um, and help connect you to other resources in addition to um, healthcare coverage. Thank you, Ira. So important. Yes, the cover all kids is like huge right now. We're trying to push, push that message. So if you have like an infograph or something that you want us to push out, like in the emails that I send or on our Facebook, please send them my way. I'm happy to do that. I'll share it right now. Yep. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Any of our other health insurance partners that are here with us? No. Okay. Uh, Michelle, are you still here from ACS? I am. I am. <laughs> Any updates? Sure. We have a couple. Um, so uh, for lung cancer screening, we want to let everybody know that the American Cancer Society has changed their guidelines. Um, we had, as of November 1st, we had a webinar, uh, I believe two days ago that talked about what the new screening guidelines are about if you were not able to attend it. I have the recording, it's it's um, through the ACS and the National Lung Cancer Roundtable. So I'll forward that to you, Jenna, so that you can pass out that recording to everybody and um, know exactly what those new guidelines say. Of course, you know, the USTPS has not jumped on board yet since they just, you know, we just put them out, but um, so most insurances won't cover our new guidelines yet. But we're hoping that as it gets more, um, you know, out there that they'll they'll catch up as they usually do. Um, so that's one thing that I wanted to share. Um, also on this sun this Saturday, uh, November eleventh, we have once this is our second annual um, partnering with um, for uh, annual N National Lung Cancer Screening Day. Um, we have partnered with the Radiology Association, and we have, have um, over 700 organizations are opening their door on Saturday to uh, provide lung cancer screenings. Um, we really try to focus on the veterans since it is uh, Veterans Day, um, and we know that is a target population that we seem to always uh, miss. So if anybody is interested in finding um, 
um, a facility that's available that's having one of these. I know all of the Monmouth Medical Southern campuses are participating. I know that for sure, but I believe there's other hospitals that are participating as well. Um, and I believe that um, Laura Gallo sent you a flyer um, that you guys might have passed out already. But so that's all part of the same initiative. Um, anybody that's doing it, we're asking you to use certain hashtags to let us know that you're partaking in it. And I can also put those hashtags in as well so that you guys can um, let us know that you're participating. Um, what else? What else? Um, uh, let me look. Let me look. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, we have a new campaign, Nourish My Health campaign. It's uh, the National Partners, ACS has launched uh, this new campaign. It's a public awareness campaign focused on preventative health screening and nutrition as ways to reduce the burden of diet-related diseases, um, such as heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. And I can get you uh, information, more information on that. Um, our uh, CAN, our American Cancer Action Network Legislative Branch of the American Cancer Society, has just released uh, fact sheets on health equity and cost of cancer. Um, it's pretty interesting information. I can get you that. Um, ACS has uh, is um, celebrating um, 110 years of being in existence, and we have a nice little uh, video that highlights all of our achievements in the past 110 years. So I will send that along. We also have launched a limited uh, series podcast called Mind, Body, Spirit, Cancer with Pat Croce, um, and it delves into cancer stories um, of well-known figures. Um, they're all on YouTube, but I will send you the link in case anybody's interested in getting more, uh, watching them. They really, actually, I watched at least four of them. Uh, Maria Medeiros was one of the speakers, and they're really quite interesting. They talk about their journey. Um, and you can pass those on to uh, patients and survivors. The last one, oh, I forgot the guy who did it, uh, but he talked about a lot about uh, being the caretaker. Um, his mom had, pan had cancer and passed and what that's like. Um, so this really pretty interesting. So if you're interested in those. Um, we also have a new updated um, information on understanding recurrences. Um, there, uh, it's, it's been new and improved. So I'll send that link for that. Um, as you know, we have our patient education materials always available. Um, we have ones that have QR codes in it, um, and I can send those along. We also have a new program called ACS Cares, which is provided, uh, it's designed to provide non-clinical patient navigation support. <clears throat> and we're looking for volunteers for that program. So if you know of any volunteers that might be interested, um, I'll send the links along and you can click on those. And let's see, uh, November 16th is our Great American Smokeout. Um, you know, this is when we're encouraging people to quit smoking, and we have some tools and resources for that. And I think uh, we have on November 9th, which is tomorrow, we have a webinar um, on HPV vaccination design from research to implementation. Um, and if you haven't registered for that, you still have the opportunity. It's tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Um, I will get all that information out to you and you can send it out. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Can you just, I couldn't hear the um, tomorrow's webinar. It's HPV vaccines and what? It's HPV vac vaccination age nine from research to implementation. Research to implementation. Okay. Yeah, it's Thank case you. studies with health departments and healthcare organizations. So it's November 9th from at two o'clock. And I will send out that link. So if anybody's interested and wants to register for it, you still can. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm just going to open the floor. I know people are kind of moving around on my screen. I can't keep track of who's who, but if you have an update and you would like to share it, please let us hear from you. Take yourself off mute or put something into the chat. All right. Well, if that concludes all of the updates, I think that also concludes the uh, meeting this morning. We have heard from so many of you with such wonderful updates. Thank you. Again, I'll ask that if you wouldn't mind putting um, 
all of this information into an email for me if you have flyers or things you want us to share on your on our Facebook page or out with the minutes for today's meeting, please send them along and um, I'll be happy to pass to everybody who's been here today. But thank you, thank you, thank you for your time today and look forward to an updated email from me with the minutes and upcoming events. Thank you, everybody. Take good care. Thank you.